Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video, and today we've got the CRKT Batum. This, if you can't tell just by looking at it, which I'm sure probably many of you can, is a Vox design with CRKT. And you're probably, if you're familiar with his work, it stands out right away, but I'm gonna just say this, his designs tend to be, uh, Thick. They tend to be, you know, maybe stocky would be an appropriate word. They all tend to have these blades with very abrupt bellies out here, uh, very thick, uh, wide knives. And, and so, you know, you maybe have seen this in, well, the Amicus from CRKT, um, a few Bokers, the Boker Vox, a few of the Viper knives that he's done. And they all kind of share some of those similar sort of short, stocky features. And the size and weight on this does not disappoint. It is very much short and fat. Uh, seven and seven eighths overall, uh, three and an eighth inch blade. Now that's a little short for me, but uh, I've been able to deal with it. Four and three quarter inch handle and the shortness and stockiness of this comes through in this dimension. You know, this guy is almost seven eighths of an inch here. It's it's overall, I would more I would be more comfortable calling it inch and three quarters, but there are some places where everything kind of swells that it does get close to inch and seven eighths. And it's fairly heavy. This little thing only, only four and three quarter inches long, uh, weighs in at a full seven ounces, okay? So it's pretty hefty for what's actually a fairly small knife in overall length. Now, in hand, I will say this feels like a big knife. You know, um, I think the Spyderco Dragonfly is often called the little big knife. And I would say this is a knife that the numbers say it's not that big, but you get it in hand and you go, this is a big knife. Um, <clears throat> Now, that's, I will say the, the place where it doesn't have the size and it would be nice to see is of course in that blade length. So let's go ahead and talk about that next. My biggest uh, sort of complaint about this knife is the relatively short blade length for what's a fairly large knife. And I actually ran into this a little bit. The other day I was cutting up a bunch of cardboard and what I kept doing is literally running out of blade. I would be working away, you know, cutting through that piece of cardboard and the cardboard would fall into this finger choil. Uh, just because I'm, I'm not used to a knife this short and especially it was bad with draw cuts. I would sort of stab the knife into the cardboard and end up going too far and end up with the cardboard again into that finger choil. Um, I mean, if you were accustomed to that and you carried this knife all the time, that probably wouldn't happen. But it, to me, it just reinforced the fact that there's not a whole lot of blade here. In fact, let me grab a, a ruler really quick and let you see that the cutting edge itself barely makes three inches. Okay, now of course if you go all the way to the handle is how you get, you know, the three and an eighth or three and, and almost a quarter maybe. Uh, so that's my biggest complaint is just a, a general lack of cutting edge. Beyond that, this knife has actually performed pretty well for me. I told you I was cutting a bunch of cardboard and I will say the big handle really lets you get a lot of strength behind your cut. Uh, the choil and this nice flat spine allows you to get up and do some detailed stuff if you need to. And uh, that I definitely appreciate. The other thing I like is that even though it's a fairly thick blade stock, it's full 3 16 of an inch thick, um, it's reasonably thin behind the edge. Now it's not, I wouldn't call this a really thin edge geometry, but it's not bad and it does cut pretty well. You know, it does a lot of the things that um, a thick edge geometry won't do. You know, it slices paper really well. It even cuts up fruit reasonably well because of the width of that blade, right? You've got a lot of, it's a very gradual increase in thickness. So it ends up working out not bad for a slicing tool. Uh, <clears throat> ATR 13 MOV, of course, is the steel on this, and it's not my favorite, but it does get the job done. And I think we have to kind of keep in mind that the price point on this is not anything crazy. You know, you're talking about 30 some dollars. And that's where, you know, we've got to kind of keep reminding ourselves of that because there'll be some things like the steel, like the weight, uh, that you go, yeah, it would be nice if that were, you know, maybe they milled out the, the stainless steel frame or even some of the G10 or they did some things different to lighten it up, used uh, different uh, different construction instead of the backspacer. I know it, that wasn't likely to happen with a Vox design. He pretty much always has this short backspacer here at the back, but nonetheless, we have to kind of keep price in mind. And certainly that's what we have to think about when we go, yeah, the steel is ATR 13 MOV here. By the way, that steel is not the worst steel that ever existed. And for most people's needs, it's going to be more than adequate. Okay. And I actually will go, will say that I do like the, the big, the best thing I like, if the biggest thing that I dislike is the, the short blade length, the, 
Uh, the thing that I like the most is that they've actually done a pretty good job of striking a balance between a very thick, hefty, hard-use blade that, you know, you can really beat on without worrying about it, but they've still made that blade cut pretty well, which is, you know, a hard balance to strike, and a lot of companies get it wrong. So I've got to give them some credit for that. All right, let's go on now to lockup and deployment. This is, of course, a stainless steel frame lock, so there's not a whole lot to talk about there. I think you're fairly familiar with that. You can see the lockup is fairly good, about 50%, and I definitely want that, especially in a hard-use knife. You know, if I'm going to really, cap, you know, beat on this knife, I want to have some confidence that that lock is pretty solid, okay? And this one certainly is. It does have an over-travel stop, you can see under my thumb there, which is not something you're used to seeing from CRKT. Uh, you can see the lock bar cut out there. Uh, not bad. It could be a little thin. And by the way, CRKT, I've you know, the fossil had issues with this. It was too thin here and it actually would break. Um, I haven't heard about that with this knife, but I would have been nice to see just a little bit of a thicker relief cut there. That is, they, I wish they wouldn't have taken quite so much material. Uh, as it stands, I still consider this a pretty tough, solid knife, but that does, you know, in any knife that you're, you know, trying to sort of market as overbuilt and, and hard use, uh, you do have to be considerate of that weak point, which a lot of hard use knives are not. I've seen uh, a number of knife tests where they fail right there at that point. Uh, so what about the, the action and uh, the actual use of this lock? In that sense, it works really well. The top of the, the cutout hole here for deployment is chamfered or maybe chamfered. It's at least milled so that it's comfortable on your fingers. Uh, the Washers here are a bit of a disappointment, just Teflon washers in there, but they are smooth and I don't know if I can do it left hand, let me try for you. No, I can't. Hold on, let me switch. Uh, with my right hand, <laughs> apparently I can't do anything on camera. Wow. Okay, I can't do it on camera, but I regularly spider flick this. I don't know why I can't do it right now. Of course the camera's on, that's why I can't do it. Um, the, the action is quite smooth and it actually feels pretty good and that's uh, by the way, pretty easy to achieve with Teflon, which is one of the reasons companies use it. Uh, it can be, the knife can be a little out of spec. I can't believe I can't spider flick this. I do it all the time. But anyway, the knife can be a little out of spec and still be smooth if you use Teflon washers, which is from a, from a end user standpoint, kind of frustrating. Why not make sure the tolerances are there in the first place? But what can you do? Uh, the reality is this works quite well. I don't really have any complaints about the action. Uh, one other thing I do like about this is that really thick stop pin. I've seen a lot of, you know, knives marketed as overbuilt and then the stop pin is like the size of a toothpick back there. And that's of course the, play, the point where when I'm cutting and I'm pushing down hard, guess where all the force is going? Right there. Uh, so a thick stop pin is actually something that I feel like is needed in a knife that's claiming to be overbuilt, but not always found, okay? Uh, so lockup and deployment, yeah, nothing big to complain about there uh, other than the Teflon washers, which, you know, at the price point of 30 some dollars, I can, I can live with, even though maybe I don't love it. What about handle and handle construction? Well, as you've already noticed by this point, it is a stainless steel frame lock with a G10 show side, uh, backspacer construction, which again is pretty typ typical of Vox knives. The lanyard hole is incorporated into that backspacer, which again is, is pretty much the way Vox always does it. Uh, one thing that might put some people off is this is pretty much a righty only knife. The pocket clip can be tip up or tip down, but it's gonna be only right side carry, okay? Uh, rather open construction. You can see a lot of open space here, so it, it'd be very easy to clean out, and that's definitely something to be appreciated. And I will say, overall, the way this is built, I, I am a fan, okay? I like the, uh, the little bit of weight savings that come from just using the G10 on the show side. Uh, I think G10 is, way more, is more than strong enough to be you know, in knife construction without any liners or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> I like the way that this is fairly thick, hefty components. So when it comes to actual construction, I don't have any real issues. And guess what? When it comes to ergonomics, I don't have any real issues. This is a really, really comfortable knife. Um, it gives me lots of real estate. Even though it's um, under eight inches, there, there seems to me to be plenty of handle here. And I find it quite comfortable either in sort of a 
a standard grip or in a saber grip if you want to choke up, even doing, you know, draw cuts uh, or let's see if I can get a reverse grip on camera here for you. In a reverse grip, again, it's very comfortable. So uh, definitely the ergonomics are very, very much on point with this knife. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, before I show you some of the knives that I've got to throw in here, I would say there are some good comparisons out there. Uh, the Amicus would be an obvious one. Some of the Boker collabs would be obvious comparisons. Um, the construction, of course, kind of reminds me of, you know, a Strider knife or the, the Benchmade 928, a few other more expensive knives. And since we're talking about, you know, hard use overbuilt knives, let's make the first comparison uh, an, an extreme example of that. This is the Cold Steel Formax. And again, the size and weight of this knife is really off the charts. It's a great big, huge knife. Uh, and because of that, it is very heavy. Now, that's I bring this in just to make the point that, yeah, when you, when you overbuild everything and you use super thick components and, and great big pieces of all of your materials, it's going to add weight to the knife, no question. Um, <clears throat> I do have some comparisons here, mostly uh, from the 2017 lineup for CRKT and from uh, different budget knives. So let's get the CRKTs out of the way first. This is the CRKT Directive, uh, and pretty much everything here is going to be longer and lighter. Uh, the blade length on this, though, is again not very big. Uh, another one that I would have a bit of a complaint about, uh, but again, not the end of the world, and especially at the price point. Um, you know, you sort of have to expect a CR13. That's just sort of the way the market is right now. Uh, where's the other CRKT that's new? Here is the Hijinx. Again, not a bad knife. I wish the steel were better on this. I would actually call this steel better than that steel. Uh, but this is a knife that you might be interested in if you wanted something a little shorter, a little easier to deal with. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, so there's a Spyderco Tenacious, and I mostly bring this one in because it happens to be visiting with me this this week, and it is a very well-known knife. So uh, you can see, by the way, you can also see that the cutting edge, you know, the, the Tenacious is about the same size, but you can see that it's got a good half inch more cutting edge, which is, the, that helps to demonstrate why I'm kind of complaining about that just a little. Uh, let's see here. Um, Let's try to, okay, so here's a, what I would call a bit of a, a budget overbuilt knife. This is a pretty toughly built charade, um, OS8 steel, fairly hefty. This is another knife that I think is crazy heavy for its size. Um, <clears throat> the, what is this one? The SCH503. Okay, so uh, let's see. A couple others here to go. Uh, these last two, I would say, are knives that I would trust in a similar role, okay? They're they're fairly well built and can really take a beating and keep on doing a good job for you. This is the Real Steel H6 Elegance. Now the blade on this is gonna be a little thinner. Certainly it's not gonna be the kind of blade you wanna pry with or anything where this one would probably take a little, you know, torsional pressure and not be, uh, not give you a problem about that. Uh, the other knife that I would say is similar to the H6 there in construction and certainly in usefulness would be the Rat Model 1. And the Route 1 is going to be a knife that's in almost any almost any but a budget knife that we have on the channel. You know, I'm going to talk about the Route 1 a little bit because it's just one of the very best offerings in terms of a budget knife that's out there. Okay, so overall, what do I think of this knife? Well, uh, I think it's definitely really bulky and really heavy for its size, but I also think it's fairly well done. It's, it's well built. The blade is a nice balance between being uh, a blade that cuts well and a blade that's also very thick and strong. Uh, yeah, the knife is seven ounces, but at the price point, I don't think it's fair to expect a company to do a lot of milling and, and trying to lighten this knife up. And, and if you just kind of, if you like the design uh, and you like overbuilt knives, you're probably used to carrying something a little heavier anyway. So I do think this is actually a pretty cool knife. There's not a lot like it out there, at least a not, not a lot that's that's as well done as this is. And I'm not saying this is, you know, the most amazing knife I've ever seen or anything, but uh, if you like the design, if you like something stocky and overbuilt and strong, uh, and you want to get that for a budget price, this is, you know, one of the few decent offerings that are out there. I would say the Amicus would be another one to look at uh, if you're interested in this. And I'll make sure that I link that Amicus review in the, uh, 
in the end credits. So you can find it there. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and we will talk to you soon.